Hello and welcome to Kirtleatham Hall School. My name's Karen Robson and I'm head teacher here. Kirtleatham School is a school for 150 children with a really wide range of learning difficulties. All of our children have special educational needs, which means they need a very special educational program. And I'm Claire, my daughter Alice comes to the school. Um, she's seven years old and um, she has special needs. Uh, she has Down syndrome and she also has hypermobility and also sensory issues. I'm the chair of the KHS Friends fundraising group um, here at Kirtleatham Hall School. We've only just started with our fundraising in the last six months. Previous to that school um, didn't have a fundraising group um, that was led by parents. And my daughter's been here at school for three years and I could see from that um, how passionate and dedicated the staff here at Kirtleatham and um, they just want the absolute best for our children at this school and I really wanted to um, help them with that. Um, so I wrote out to parents and asked if anybody would like to join me um, to do a fundraising group and to become a charity to help the school with the funds and um, luckily there was um, 11 people who uh, agreed to help me with that. So we've got a small, wonderful, fabulous fundraising team here at Kirk Latham. So KHS Friends approached me and said that they were committed to fundraising for us and wanted to know what the staff and the children felt were the biggest priority. And without question, the biggest priority was the sound and light room. It was a big priority because we knew it was going to be a big job and we knew it was going to be an expensive job. So KHS Friends decided that they would do as much fundraising as they possibly could over the coming months and probably years to be able to raise enough money to create an immersive sound and light room. So we began by getting some plans drawn up and getting some quotes as to how much that was going to cost. When we did that, we knew it was going to be expensive and we knew that it was going to be a big mountain to climb, but Everybody in the community was really committed to being able to do this. And then we got in touch with Tony through KHS Friends. And Tony came along and took a look at our sound and light room and asked me lots of questions about how would the children benefit, how many children would benefit and what impact it would have. And it was only really at that point, I think, that we all realised what a significant impact that that would have for our learners. So Tony asked us how much money had we already fundraised and we had raised just over £1,200. Um, we'd had some events over the summer, um, the usual fundraising things like uh, stalls and um, things like that and the raffles. Um, so yeah, we know that the um, amount of money that we needed to do a project like this um, was significant and um, we were in no doubt that we needed, um, you know, some external help as well. And so we were delighted, obviously, that the Teesside Family Foundation were wanting to come and um, look at our project and see what help we would be able to give. So Tony asked us, how long did he think it was going to take us? And we said, it didn't really matter how long it was going to take, even though it did matter, because all of our children who are currently here are missing out on that opportunity. And for future years, while we're fundraising, those children also would be missing out. But we thought six or seven years. So within four weeks, we got a contact call again from Tony asking if he could come back into school with some trustees. And we thought that Tony was going to come with his trustees and say that he was going to fund match that £1,200 and put us up further along on our journey. However, we we done Teesside Family Active over the summer where we had various activities, ability bike and swimming, sensory room, play well, foot golf. There was about 1,500 children who used these various activities over the summer. And I met the parents uh, there and they were using the sensory and play world. So they were saying how, how good the sensory facilities were at uh, Sports Village and how they would love this facility at their school. So I asked a few questions and they said that the sensory room wasn't sort of up to where it should be. It's just, you know, school budgets are so tight and staffing levels have increased massively due to the amount of uh, special needs the children have. So I came down to school, uh, didn't really know what I was walking into, to be honest. 
So I, I met I met the head teacher and I met the some of the other parents from that Keisha's uh, friends, and I had a look around the school. Uh, it was an amazing school. It was sixty years the school had been run. Uh, so I met the children. And I, I went out the back. It was it was a nice day and children were playing. And uh, one of the children was uh, was DJ with the other children. It got me massively. And then when we, I was talking to Karen, the head teacher. She said that basically if she retired and this room wasn't done, it would be the saddest day of her work in life. And it really got to me. And when I looked at the room and I walked away, I thought we've got to make a difference. We've got to do something, how we're going to do it and how we're going to achieve this 30,000. I haven't got a clue, but we've got brilliant trustees at the Teesside Family Foundation. We always want to help. We will always go the extra mile. And I knew that, everybody would get together and we'd come up with some sort of support now so when we sp sat, spoke at the trustee meeting we were talking about a donation of ten thousand pound originally so we left that meeting and then we thought you know if, you, if we donate ten thousand pound but then it takes another 10 years to get the other twenty thousand pound it's just a lot of wasted years uh and we looked at the impact it left on the children and you, you're looking at, oh, 150 children could use this facility a, a day. That's 20, 30,000 a year. So over 10 years, you're looking at hundreds of thousands of children. This is not only educational, it's therapeutic. It takes, it takes the minds to, to another dimension. And they really need it. And so we said, let's do it. Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's donate 30,000. Let's get involved with KHS friends in the school. And let's get involved with the project and let's make it happen in 2020. Uh, we couldn't do it without the support of, of, of the public and yourselves and, and, uh, and companies alike. Uh, so, yeah, so here we are and we're open at uh, Easter as, as the grand opening. Right, so the issue is we need to raise £30,000 to make sure that we can deliver what we promised to Kirkland and Hall School. Um, We've already discussed about the, the original uh, concept and, and Tony's involvement and, and the rest of the uh, trustees. But coming in this building brings tears to your eyes. They um, clearly need our help. Uh, we need your help tonight. If you can uh, put an extra £10 in for an extra raffle ticket, if you can put an extra £100 on a bid at auction, it'll help us deliver what we need to do. Uh, this is a commitment we've made and we're going to carry it out. Thank you, everybody.